Have you ever had an issue arise in your life and suddenly found yourself mentally spiraling into old negative self-talk? If you're human, you've likely had this happen a time or two. If you're anything like me, you probably said, yeah, every time. Here's a sneak peek at how it went for me in the past. Issue, not enough money to pay the rent. Self-talk, oh no, what am I going to do? Oh, you're so stupid. I can't believe you just spent blank dollars at the grocery store and you shouldn't have filled the tank of gas. Oh, idiot, what were you thinking? Issue, car breaking down. Self-talk, ah, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Stupid idiot, look what you've done. It's your own dang fault. How could you be so stupid not to handle this problem sooner? Now what? Issue, friend stops communicating. Self-talk, ah, it's my fault. I must have done something wrong. I'm so stupid. Why would anybody want to be friends with me anyway? Loser, idiot, of course she doesn't want to talk to you anymore. You get the idea. I had several different loops of irrational self-talk that I'd regularly run, including my stupid loop featured here. It didn't make a difference how much I meditated, practiced deep breathing, or ate my greens. If I had an issue arise, I would spiral into one of my old familiar rants. Dr. Mary Hulnick from the University of Santa Monica repeatedly states how you relate to the issue is the issue. The first time I heard this phrase was in 2003 and I immediately grasped the truth. It just rang through my body like a gong. Applying this knowledge to my own consciousness was life-changing. While I was dealing with some external life problem, I'd suddenly be guided to focus on my inner dialogue, becoming ultra aware of my self-talk relating to the outer problem. Inevitably, I'd catch myself criticizing myself, berating myself, name-calling myself, shooting myself, or otherwise putting myself down in some various abusive manner. What I discovered was that I had been perpetuating a pattern of abuse inside of my own mind, a familial pattern of abuse. How I was relating to myself internally actually was the issue. The outer level problems were simply presenting me with opportunities to see how I'd been treating myself on the inside. This was one of those big aha moments in my life, in my journey. I instantly became determined to relate to myself with loving, no matter what. Since I'd been a loving and supportive mother, it wasn't a stretch to begin to be Begin to speak to myself the way I'd spoken to my own kids on a good day. I began to respond to my irrational thinking with things like, I really hear you and tell me more about how, why you feel afraid to do this. I began to listen without criticizing, scoffing, demeaning, name calling, or making a sarcastic retort. After I'd allowed my fearful thought to vent, I'd reply with something kind and gentle, like, it's all right, it's okay to feel that way. You're safe, I love you. And as I gave myself a different kind of internal support, I was able to listen to myself in a whole new way, a way that enabled me to hear all of my old irrational ideas from a more compassionate perspective. Listen with compassion in turn allowed the more insecure parts of me to feel safe enough to unload all the fearful ideas and misinterpretations of reality. 
that I'd taken on as a child. My supportive, loving self was able to embrace, to accept, to hear, and to apply compassion, and then to provide new, updated, and healthier beliefs to replace the limiting ones. By relating to myself in a caring and gentle manner, my entire belief system rapidly transformed. Once I took dominion over my own belief system, my entire pattern of thinking changed without any effort on my part. My thoughts just naturally fell into alignment with my new, updated beliefs. For instance, when I cleared the old irrational idea that I was stupid, fully integrated the knowing that I'm connected to the source of infinite intelligence, my entire stupid loop just simply dissolved. From that point on, if I was faced with a mistake or a problem, I'd tell myself something supportive, encouraging things like, it's okay, I can get through this. I can learn anything I want to learn because I'm connected to source. What sorts of self-defeating, irrational loops do you run when faced with an outer issue in your life? Be willing to look deeply at how you've habitually related to yourself when you're facing an external challenge. Thankfully, if you're reading or listening to this, you're awake enough to change the pattern of how you relate to yourself right here, right now. The most important change you can make toward your freedom which will accelerate your own healing process is allowing yourself to have your feelings, to listen to yourself with compassion, and to respond to yourself in a loving, caring manner inside of your own head. You can do this not only while working your process around an irrational belief, but in every moment of your day. Say, I now monitor my self-talk diligently and respond with care and compassion within. I am so worthy of my own loving kindness. Action step. Become aware of how you've been relating to yourself under stress internally and begin to cultivate a new, healthier pattern of loving self-talk. Declaration. How I relate to the issue is my issue. I now respond gently to myself with love, caring, kindness, and compassion. I now treat myself respectfully no matter what my outer circumstances reflect. Breathe that in. Many blessings of joy and vibrant freedom.